Let's just say that the results of Tuesday's primaries did nothing but confirm the notion that this year being in is out. If you need more proof, take a look at this. A Fox News poll asked if the only thing you knew about a candidate is that one was the incumbent and the other was a new challenger, who would you vote for? Overwhelmingly, 41 to 20 percent, voters said they'd vote for the newbie. Joining me now from Los Angeles, Democratic Governor Ed Rendell of Pennsylvania, and from Minneapolis, Republican Governor Tim Pawlenty of Minnesota. Thank you, governors both. I appreciate it. Governor Rendell, first to you, since you had uh, two kind of interesting races in your state Tuesday night. Is the anti-incumbency, anti-establishment fervor for real? Oh, no question. Anytime you've got a serious economic problem in the country, and we still do, although Pennsylvania's gained 55,000 jobs in the last two months, Candy. But even though we've done that, we still have a tough economic problem. Uh, when people have lost their jobs, their homes, their 401ks, there's a lot of anger out there, and it's usually visited on incumbents, and you're seeing that all over either party. It doesn't make a difference. And, Governor Pawlenty, if you had to talk to an incumbent, what's the best way to run? I mean, there, there are a lot of them out there running this year. Well, I think the best advice for anybody running is to be for change. And it's not just anti-incumbent, it's what that incumbency represents. It represents a, a commitment to, or a sense of a commitment to flaw, a flawed past, flawed strategies, out-of-control spending, out-of-control deficits, an economy that has not yet recovered, is sputtering. And so that's not just against incumbents. It's a dissatisfaction with the substance underneath it, and it really relates uh, profoundly to the economy. The, the second sort of uh, storyline that we saw running through Tuesday, Governor Rendell, was about the Tea Party, which had its first statewide success in the election, uh, at least to be the Republican nominee of, of Rand Paul in Kentucky. Uh, tell me how much of a power you think the Tea Party is. Well, I think the Tea Party movement, which is the anger that people feel towards incumbency, uh, it has some power, particularly in Republican primaries. But if you look at Pennsylvania 12, Candy, that was a district that John McCain carried uh, against Barack Obama in 08. I lost it the first time I ran for governor. Uh, so it's a Republican performing district. Mark Critz, the Democrat, won by eight and a half points. And the Tea Party, that was a special election. The Tea Party was not a factor in that election at all. In fact, uh, everyone thought Critz was going to lose early on. I've got to believe, Governor Rendell, that you sort of like the fact that the Tea Party seems to be a rising force in the Republican Party. Sure. I think it, it is a difficulty for the Republican Party. I think they've lost uh, some very, very good people, like Governor Christ, who I think uh, Tim and I have both admired for a long time, uh, like uh, Senator Bennett, who uh, was a conservative, was an anti-spender, uh, and he was targeted and defeated. I think the Tea Party candidates are going to be more easy to beat in a, in a general election. I think that's the case with Rand Paul. Well, what about that, Governor Pawlenty? We did see uh, Rand Paul sort of at least, at the very least, get tied up in knots over the Civil Rights Act of 1965, something a, a probably more seasoned politician might have avoided. Uh, don't you end up in the Republican Party uh, having weaker candidates if you have Tea Party candidates? Well, I think, first of all, uh, Candy, that his comments about the Civil Rights Act were unfortunate, and he since then he said he would have voted for that Civil Rights Act. His explanation was unfortunate to how we got to that point, but in any event, the Tea Party movement represents, I think, new energy, new ideas, passion around these themes of we've had enough, government's too big, the debt's too big, and to the extent that uh, accrues to the Republican side of the ledger, that's a helpful thing. We'll take that energy. It's still, you know, a little uh, chaotic in some ways, but it's a good thing. Every generation has an, an insurgency in politics. It brings new energy, new people, new ideas. I'm glad that energy's on the side of, of the conservatives and the Republicans in most of these races. How much, Governor Pawlenty, do you think the anti-incumbent move, that sort of there's too much spending, uh, there's to, in, to a certain extent uh, too many taxes, how much of that uh, is also aimed at state governments? Can you tell us from your point of view? Well, state governments, unlike federal governments, can't print money in the basement. We have to balance our budgets. But you're seeing a, a sentiment in these state races across the country. There's 37 governor's races up on the ballot this year. I'm the vice chair of the Republican Governors Association, so I'm heavily involved in this. 
and it looks like the playing field, the sentiment, the issues significantly favor conservatives or Republicans. People, even in a place like Minnesota, there was a recent poll and they asked, do you want a smaller or bigger government? Do you want your government to be more effective and more limited? And the sentiment was very favorable towards the conservative or Republican perspective. And that's in a traditionally liberal place like Minnesota. So clearly the uh, winds are in our favor, at least for 2010. But you don't want to take these things for granted. You set the expectations so high that uh, you, it's hard to live up to. And I think it's important that Republicans stay focused on doing the work and delivering the message. I, I want to ask you, Governor Rendell, and, and, and then back to Governor Pawlenty, and that is about your state budgets, because you, all, both of you, are under enormous pressure uh, and have to balance your budgets. And you've got a big problem in Pennsylvania. Uh, some of your, the tax receipts have not come in uh, the way you thought they would. I, as I understand it, you're about a billion dollars in the hole. Uh, isn't all of that going to kind of also drive anger toward uh, state officials and uh, towards yourself? Although I, I know you're, get, you're getting out of office and are term limited, so don't have to worry too much about it. Well, I do worry about it, not because of elections, but because it's a real problem. But actually, Candy, we have a relatively small uh, uh, underperforming revenue. Uh, our deficit is a little under a billion dollars. Illinois is 12 and a half. New York is 10. Uh, uh, New Jersey is 11 and a half. California is, what, 30? You still have so to make it up some a, way, don't you? Uh, we still have to make it up, and we've cut so far in the last uh, two years, we've cut $2 billion of state spending out of the budget. Uh, we'll continue to make cuts that are necessary. And there's some type of revenue enhancements that the public overwhelmingly supports in Pennsylvania. We're the only state in the union that doesn't tax cigars and smokeless tobacco, for example. We're the only shale state in the union that doesn't tax natural gas extraction. So those things the public overwhelmingly, about 65 percent plus, favors. So by balancing cuts and some common sense revenue enhancements, uh, we'll be able to hand the bill. And by dollars, revenue think, enhancements, you, you just mean tax increases on certain no, things? No, these aren't tax increases. These would be new taxes on things that we are unique in the fact that we don't tax and the public supports that. Okay. Governor Pawlenty, you took uh, a, a slightly different route, I know. Uh, but I have to tell you, I was looking at the, the governor of Arizona actually instituted some tax hikes in order to try to get her budget uh, in balance. She's a, a Republican, obviously. Is it just verboten that Republicans raise taxes in order to get their state budgets under control? Well, I sure hope so. I mean, one of the things that Republicans do stand for and should stand for is that we think the country and our states are taxed enough. In Minnesota's case, uh, I've drawn a line in the sand and saying we are not going to raise taxes. Minnesota's problem is not that we're an undertaxed state. We've been trying to lower taxes in Minnesota, not increase them. So we just finished our uh, legislative session and solved a significant budget deficit with no tax increases. Uh, and I think that's a direction that states should go. And I think people are sending the message that they think government is too big, spending's going up too fast, taxes are too high. And that's why I think Republicans are in a better position coming into this fall than our friends on the other side of the aisle. We'll have more from Governor Pawlenty and Governor Rendell right after this break.